Hello everyone, I'm Tianyi Wang from Purdue University. In this video, I introduce our work Gesture, an authoring system for creating freehand interactive AR applications. I will first talk about the background and design space, then I will explain the workflow and the gesture detection methods. Finally, I will go through some application scenarios that were created by our system. Empowered by the hand tracking techniques, freehand interactions has become an important way to interact with virtual contents. But most AR systems only support limited gestures, such as pointing and grabbing. Some prior works invited end users to customize the hand interactions. Yet these works involved an offline learning process, and users could not test and play with interactions immediately. Some other works utilize the programming by demonstration metaphor and enable users to design the hand interactions on their own. While these works mainly focus on raw sensor inputs, we hope to make an authoring system that can allow users to map their complex and versatile gestures with plentiful behaviors of the AR contents through programming by demonstration. Before diving into the Austin workflow, we first need to learn what types of gestures are used in AR. We follow an illicit study done in 2013, which categorized the gestures in AR from six dimensions. The first four dimensions describe the semantic meaning and spatial properties of the gesture. These dimensions can be inferred from the user's demonstration. So a user does not have to tell the author system explicitly about this information. The rest two dimensions are special. The form dimension describes the status of the hand during an interaction. The hand gesture with a static form only includes a specific status of the hands. There is no temporal information in it. And the hand gestures with a dynamic form has a series of changing hand status. The temporal changes of these gestures are important. The flow dimension describes when the virtual contents respond. For a discrete flow, a virtual contents responds right after the gesture. And for a continuous flow, the virtual contents responds during the gesture. Obviously, these two dimensions are about the input and output of a freehand interaction. We need users to specify them because different combinations of form and flow can result in different interactions. Static input plus discrete output makes static provoking interactions, in which virtual contents respond right after a static gesture is detected. A light bulb glows after a user performs a holding gesture is shown here. Static input plus continuous output makes manipulating interactions in which virtual contents follows the user's hand while the static gesture is kept. Here, the user is holding a virtual cup with a fist gesture. Dynamic input plus discrete output makes dynamic provoking interactions, in which virtual contents respond right after a dynamic gesture is detected. Here is an example that the user breaks a soda can by performing a clenching fist gesture. And dynamic input plus continuous output makes synchronous interactions in which virtual contents respond synchronously to the movement of the hands during a dynamic gesture. The spring here stretches following a pinching gesture. We design gesture author interface so that users can make any of these interactions by selecting an input object and connecting it to an output object in AR. Here I briefly show the authoring workflow of gesture. First, the user creates virtual assets by either scanning, sketching, or importing existing models. Then the user demonstrates the gesture. Note that he selects the type of the hand gesture before starting demonstration. After that, the user selects an output behavior and connects it with the input gesture. Finally, the user can try out the freehand interaction. Here is another example for creating a dynamic provoke interaction. The user connects a petting gesture with a shrinking animation. For synchronous gesture, we let users to create the animation first, then demonstrate the hand gesture using the animation as a reference. The animation are then mapped to the hand gesture. Next, I will explain detection algorithms used in our system. We use the 10 hand joint angles to represent a static hand pose. During detection, the input hand pose and the demonstrated hand pose are put into a simple CMS neural network together. The network then tells whether the two hand poses belong to the same gesture. We train the CMS neural network with 18 different gestures to make sure it can effectively identify the hand poses. 
To detect dynamic gesture, we first convert the gesture into a list of states. Each state is described by a hand pose, the moving direction of the hand, and the direction of the palm. As shown here, a wave hand and the grab gesture can be separated into three states. We assume that the user is performing the same dynamic gesture if the list of states are matched. For synchronous gestures, we extract a numeric key value from the gesture and map it to the progress of the virtual content. Due to different hand poses, the key value can be different. There can be a distance between two fingertips, an angle between two fingers, or a diameter. Here shows the eight types of synchronous gesture supported by our system. It is possible for us to include more types in the future. To conclude this presentation, I share some interactive AR contents that were created by our system. Thank you for your time. I'm happy to take any question.